So I'm glad to open this uh, today's event and to welcome Hikmet Tacic, Holocaust and Genocide Scholar from Sarajevo and the author of the book, Torture, Humiliate, Kill, Inside the Bosnian Serb Camp System, which has been published uh, with the University of Michigan Press this year in 2020 and in which Hikmet Karcic develops the collective traumatization theory, which contends that the concentration camps set up by the Bosnian Serb authorities during the war had the primary purpose of inflicting collective trauma on the non-Serb population of Bosnia and Herzegovina. We start today with a short introduction of Hikmet Karcic. Then Hikmet will present his book, uh, in a presentation of about 10 minutes uh, and outline the most important thesis arguments and results of his work. Afterwards, I will talk to Hikmet about his book and also about its reception in Bosnia and Herzegovina and beyond. And at this point to anticipate this, there will therefore be no opportunity for the audience to ask questions today. However, we hope that with this event and so the presentation and the subsequent discussion, we will make you curious about the book and about the topic as difficult as it is. And then, and that you will probably, probably, probably read the book, which has also been published in open access format and can be read online. To conclude these first welcoming words, uh, I would like to thank the Südosteuropa Gesellschaft, the Southeast Europe Association, uh, to let uh, to 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 organize this event and also to let me moderate this event. As to myself, very briefly, my name is uh, Heike Kage. I'm an historian at the University of Regensburg, and I am lecturing at the chair for the history of Southeastern and Eastern Europe. So let me introduce Hikmet Karcic uh, to the audience. Hikmet is a genocide and Holocaust scholar based in Sarajevo in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Hikmet is a senior associate and researcher at the Institute for Islamic Tradition of Bosniaks in Sarajevo, and also a senior fellow with the Center for Global Policy in Washington. He was a 2017 Auschwitz Institute for Peace and Reconciliation Keene State College Global Fellow. And he has written extensively on genocide, denial, and atrocity prevention. As to his academic career, Hikmet graduated from the Faculty of Law in Sarajevo in uh, 2010. At the same faculty, he defended his master thesis two years later. And then again, six years later in 2018, Hikmet defended his doctoral dissertation with the title Camps as a Means of Ethnic Religious Cleansing of Non-Serbs in Bosnia and Herzegovina at the International University in Sarajevo, where he completed his doctoral studies in the subjects of political science and sociology. Hikmet Karcic worked at different places already. He worked, for instance, at the Institute for Missing Persons of Bosnia and Herzegovina, at the Center for Advanced Studies, and he was also for one year the co coordinator of the project of the project Mapping Camps and Places of Detention in Bosnia and Herzegovina 1992 to 1995 in the TPOS Association, which is Utrujenia Transitska Transitska Pravda Odgovorna Sjećanje or Transitional Justice Responsibility and Memory Association. Apart from the book which uh, Hikmet is presenting today, uh, Hikmet uh, authored and edited further books. For instance, he is also the author of the book Appeals to the Truth, which has been published by Konrad Adenauer Foundation in 2013. Hikmet, uh, this was my introduction uh, of you, and now we can open the floor uh, for your presentation and your outline of your book. The floor is yours. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Ike, and thank thanks uh, South Europe Association for organizing this, this this event. And I would also like to thank the the whole and your audience, which is with here uh, today. Um, the book which we are presenting today is a result of, of many years of research, um, and later on to, to the questions probably. 
on the, the way how I got to writing this book. But nevertheless, just in a, in a short way to say it, uh, while I was working at the Missing Persons Institute, uh, which is a primary state institute searching for mass graves uh, in Bosnia and Herzegovina, and also later on while I was working at the, uh, as, as a project coordinator for mapping uh, concentration camps in Bosnia, uh, I came across a large uh, level of, of documentation and knowledge about concentration camps. I realized that this is one of the topics which has not been covered um, by scholarship thus far. Uh, so when, after completing my, my MA, which was on missing persons, and most of the missing persons are related to concentration camps, I decided that the next logical step would be to do a comprehensive uh, research on concentration camps uh, in Bosnia. Uh, this was, of course, much more um, complex and then I, then I uh, initially anticipated. So uh, in the end, I, I, I ended up doing four case studies, uh, which, is part of the, which is part of the book. There's uh, Priyadur, Vilna, um, Vishigrad, and Bilecha. These are four towns located, uh, which were located under Bosnian Serb control from 1992 to 1995, and where uh, a series of concentration camps and uh, detention centers uh, and facilities were set up by the local uh, Bosnian Serb authorities with the primary aim of uh, detaining non serbs So uh, I, I took these four case studies and I analyzed uh, what happened inside the towns, uh, what happened inside the camps, what were the purposes of the camps and so on. And I chose these four towns according to their geographical and political uh, position. So geographical, Trader, for example, is located in northwestern Bosnia, Bielna uh, in northeastern Bosnia, Vishgrad in eastern Bosnia, and Bilecha uh, in southeastern. So, so, so geographically, I cover all these areas. Politically, uh, uh, what I claim in my book is that the, the establishment of these camps were set up by the local authorities uh, in, the, mostly in, the, in each of these regions. And uh, I divided the, the, the authority or perpetrator level on three, three main areas, the micro, meso, and the, and the macro level. So uh, in the case of, of the camps, the municipalities, for example, was the micro level. Well, the mess level were these regional governments which were established in 1991, so one year before the war started. So these were the infamous um, autonomous regions which were set up. And so each of these towns actually belongs to one, one of these uh, regional uh, autonomous regions. So for example, uh, Predar belongs to um, uh, the Serbian autonomous region of China or autonomous region of China, IRK. Vichigre um, belongs to the uh, um, Autonom now, last uh, Sarajevo, Romania, for example. Like that. So, so I decided to to take this, to take this approach because my my primary um, goal was to see why and to what extent were these camps used in the early days of the war. Because we see these camps being actually mostly used in the first days of the war in all of these towns. We had a very significant and a very clear pattern. Events going on. This is something which, which, which I really found fascinating because you had a very same series of events going on from Priedor to village. And this was all organized by people who were on the local level. And of course, at the time, the, the only communication lines they had were, were telephone uh, and so on. So, so I was interested in how, how was it possible that these uh, local governments were able to establish the, the same kind of, of uh, camp system uh, on the local level uh, without, without having a, a much more, uh, let's say, detailed um, top to bottom order, which didn't exist. So my conclusion was that the, there, was a, there, were, there was a pattern which existed throughout this whole entire region, which differentiated from town to town. But in reality, the, 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 the nexus Camps was the same, and this was the collective traumatization theory, which I explained. So, um, it, what it means is that 
X camps were not that camps. So these were these were uh, camps where which did not have the primary aim of murdering and killing people. These camps, in my in my theory, uh, uh, had the primary aim of traumatizing the detainees to that extent that they never want to return back to the previous home. So that, that's my that's my uh, view of the of the camp system, and I I explain this collective theory. The collective traumatization theory by a series of, of uh, uh, joint uh, similar events which were going on inside these camps from theater to village, uh, such as uh, public ceremonial executions, for example, of, of certain people, uh, then uh, the, the, the sexual abuse and rape of, of women, uh, girls, but also of men, which a uh, topic which is still taboo in Boston. And, and thirdly, uh, I'm just going to give, not, not going to explain the whole entire uh, uh, segment, but uh, thirdly, the, the destruction of cultural, historical, and uh, religious buildings in those towns. So, after the whole entire population was filtered through, through filtered through, uh, quote unquote, the towns, then the uh, old elements of, of non Serb uh, cultural, historical, and, and religious uh, elements and, 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 and buildings in the town were destroyed or converted into, into another um, another purpose for areas. Thus, thus uh, in that way, uh, these towns were entirely cleansed of the previous um, inhabitants of these towns. So, so this, was, this was, in short, the, 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 the explanation of, of this theory. And uh, what I actually saw was that if you look at the uh, speeches which were given by these local authority uh, politicians inside the Boston Assembly and things like that, they were mentioning uh, the establishment of the Serbian living space, or living space, uh, which was fascinating for me because that this shows that uh, the, the, the whole concept of, of living space uh, was something which, which was uh, borrowed from, from, from others. So as a result, I, what I did in my book was I wanted to put the context of concentration camps in Bosnia in a wider co uh, context of concentration detention throughout history. So uh, in, in the book, I give a short history of the first camps from Cuba to, to, to South Africa to uh, you know, Nazi Germany, uh, the Mau Mau in, 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 in the 1950s, and um, you know, Cambodia. Um, Bosnia and so on, um, because I wanted to show that uh, even though all concentration camps are the same, they belong to the same, let's say, family, um, the, the same concept, uh, they're all different. Like, so, so the, the, the aims behind these camps, gulags, for example, or the uh, American Indian boarding schools, also considered to be uh, uh, you know, detention uh, centers and so on, Primary aim was to inflict uh, uh, trauma so that these people would never be able to, to regenerate. And even though, for example, the, the gulags had, or the Chinese, uh, the camps in China had a sort of re-educational purpose, this, this was not the case in Bosnia. So um, the aim in Bosnia was actually, um, I, I narrow it down in the title of my book, Torture, Humiliate, Kill. Uh, I think that these are the three words which are significant and which are uh, the, the common dominator for all the camps run by the Bosnian Serb authorities. And what was most fascinating thing for me, the, 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 the discovery that the most of the perpetrators who took part in the most brutal, um, brutal tortures in the camps were uh, members of the Bosnian Serb Reserve Forces. Uh, the buses, police reserve forces. So they were not members of the, the army, they were members of the police force. Uh, and members of the reserve police force, people who got, these were ordinary men, postmen, uh, factory workers, and so on, who got mobilized um, uh, in 1981, given, given uh, a short training, given arms, and you know, given the position to be, be guards, to be... Um, um, to be soldiers, to be uh, police officers, and, so on. and, they, and, they, and the, the right and the reason for uh, targeting people inside the camp was very various. Basically, 
um, uh, settling previous scores from before the war. You know, if somebody was good in Fundo, uh, or somebody beat someone in a Tech Fundo match 20 years ago, he would come and settle the score now by torturing uh, a detainee. Uh, or, or, you know, if somebody had a better car or a better motorcycle, then, you know, they would come and torture them to give to hand over the keys uh, of the of the personal property and things like that so you had a lot of opportunists but also you had a lot of people who knew and th this was probably the most uh, um, shocking of all the perpetrators knew their victims because these were these were such small towns so like, like in the case of Kozarats or in the case of um, the people who raped their their victims knew their victims uh, the, rape, the the victims knew knew who the rapists were. Um, you know, you had, you had cases where um, high school teachers were killing their their, their former students, uh, and vice versa, and killing their former teachers, and so on. So this was something which 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 was very shocking for me to realize actually how personal the crimes were, but also um, the the whole concept behind collective dramatization shows that. Through a series of executions of most important people in the elites in the, in the, in the cities and towns, the, the torture and uh, humiliation and 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 abuse which was um, inflicted upon the the, the 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 general population, along with the destruction of these uh, you know cultural historical and religious buildings, um, led to drastic demographic changes in these small local uh, communities. Entire communities were entirely destroyed. These um, small ecosystems, which where people lived in for 40, 50 years together, were entirely destroyed forever, basically. And I showed this through through these four case studies, where I showed the different demographic changes which were going on throughout throughout uh, the last thirty years. Basically, uh, the in the end, what, what we can see is that the perpetrators have actually very, very much succeeded in, in, in their primary goal of spread of all the one population. And then the people who live now uh, in these areas who return back, uh, they have very little chance of, of, uh, of long-term uh, regeneration of these communities. So with that, Heike, I would, I would say. <clears throat> Thank you so much, uh, Hikmet. Um, I have prepared some questions, and I, I was also writing uh, some thoughts uh, while you were as while you were speaking. Uh, nevertheless, I, I would like to start with the more methodological and concept conceptual conceptual questions to your book. And uh, let us why not put the finger right at the heart of your book, which is your main thesis about uh the collective traumatization theory so Hikmet, do you want to say that non-serbs have been collectively traumatized by the system of the bosnian serb camp system i'm asking because trauma as a concept is a term that originates in the 19th century uh, in psychological language uh? And uh, it receives this concept of trauma receives what I would call uh, the mainstream psychiatric acceptance in relation to war as a traumatic event only in the 1980s after the Vietnam War. So the, ever since the concept of trauma has been related, was related to the individual level, yeah, in the late 19th century and also in the late 20th century and today. Um, especially historians who are focusing on, on facts, on sources, on evidence, on social structures and on power relations, for instance. Historians in Alia have severe reservations towards the transfer of uh, individual con concepts, such as trauma, uh, to the collective level. And I, I would like to ask you to, to elaborate a bit on this, on this tangent and on this debate. Yeah, that, that's a very good question. Actually, when I when I spoke to um, to people who survived the camps and so on, and each personal experience is different, basically, right? the different story. 
And uh, I was also of that opinion that, that uh, you know, traumas can be very individual. Um, but talking to some other people who, um, who were basically, you know, deported from their towns in a matter of three, three days. I, I met some, some, some families, uh, women and children who were, who were in camp for three days. Not, not, I mean, that significantly, that's very, very, a very small number of days. But then when I was, when I was talking to them and hearing their stories and so on, what I realized is that um, individual experiences, individual executions uh, created collective trauma. And I start off in the in the book with one of those cases uh, from Vishigrad, in a school called Hassan Belatovats, where uh, one night the, the the one of the Bosnian Serb soldiers takes out an elderly man, uh, a grandfather from from the, from the from the gym where where um, where these women and children and elderly were kept. So he take him out, and later on you hear a scream. They come back into the room and they throw his severed head uh, among among the women and children. That's, that's the first uh, part, part. And when I talk to these people, I realize that each, each single person from that gym remembers that night, remembers that execution, remembers that brutal ceremonial. Um, I mean, that, that was very tactical, actually. People imagine this, uh, you know, remember this very dark room with, with, with soldiers entering and throwing, throwing the, the, the severe head among people, women screaming, women crying. You know this whole entire atmosphere inside the gym, uh, and then I realized actually that that uh, this kind of um, uh, ceremonial and tactical executions, which you know in reality when you look at, at the Hague Tribunal or the Court of VH, that night in, in that school only one murder was committed. Statistically, that's a small number, uh, but when you talk to the people living there, and when you talk to I mean when you talk to people who survived that. that Cool. They'll remember that experience. They'll remember that, and they all talk about it with with such trauma, with such, with such a traumatic experience. So I believe that certain uh, elements within within the experiences can be active. Um, you know, it's it's impossible, for example, to talk about siege of Sarajevo as an individual trauma. I believe that it's very collective, uh, or, or Srebrenica in that case. Well. Uh, and, and especially these these new newer researchers which show that this trauma can be transgenerational or or uh, uh, or, or multiple trauma. Uh, you, know, you have I I realized uh, talking to one man who survived an execution in Visegrad who ended up in, in Srebrenica and survived Srebrenica as well. But he had actually multiple traumas because he survived 1982 and he survived 1985. It's right two, two, two massacres basically, genocide. So uh, in his in the in the in the in the family history of in the, of his family, this is a this is becoming a collector collective trauma basically. So in my opinion, I believe that uh, this kind of trauma can be collective and and uh, it's really becoming part of of Russian identity identity as well. Yeah, thank you, Ahmed, uh, for your answer. Uh, this brings me to my next question, because uh, uh, I, you state in your book that uh, this is a quote, each genocide is unique, but perpetrators learn from each other. Yeah, and I think I, I think this is a very central quote, because you also uh, kind of compare or relate the Bosnian Serb camp system to uh, the German Nazi camp system. And uh, could you elaborate a little bit on this? So where are the differences? Uh, uh, what are the uh, commonalities between the two camp systems? Well, I mean, uh, when one, one journalist asked um, Radoslav Bergenin, who was a political leader in, in northwestern Bosnia, why he had camps, uh, his reply was, you know, Churchill and Hitler had camps, so why can't we? So th this is, for me, this is interesting because uh, this shows that uh, these officers, these political leaders, um, some of whom had personal experience from Yasuno, um, knew very well the concept of camps, what camps, mean, what camps uh, can relate to, and so on. But nevertheless, they, they decided to establish this kind of huge, especially in Prior. Prior is, I think, the 
biggest uh, uh, collective trauma that, that, that exists in northwest uh, Bosnia. You know, like in the case of Ternopoli, you had 30,000 in, 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 in the camp, a large number of, for, you know, Northern Europe. Um, what are the differences between uh, Nazi camps and, and uh, Bosnian Serb camps? Well, firstly, the Bosnian Serb camps were not organized. They were, in fact, very primitive, uh, as to say. So no, no new buildings were built for the camp. Uh, in most cases, it, they had a very clear structure of, of who is in charge of what, but they didn't have a, a good paper trail. So, uh, you know, they had paper trails depending on, on from case to case. So the army would have a better paper trail than the police. It also brings us to the, to the whole concept of uh, security services in former Yugoslavia. Which had a very much more NKVD style of, of getting things done, uh, whereas the army was much, was much more oriented towards towards uh, uh, writing things down on documents. Um, so I would compare these these Bosnian Serb camps with the first initial camps which were set up in Germany in 1933. You know those very makeshift uh, uh, camps in in certain you know. Uh, small buildings or police stations and things like that, but they never were uh, to that extent sophisticated. And uh, in most cases, you had these camps where in, in Bosnia where, where uh, the, the perpetrators were just uh, trying to uh, torture them to that extent that they would either die in the camp out of natural diseases or, or, or health and so on. Or in some cases, like in Bilic, huh, which was was fascinating for me, they kept these you know thirty to fifty Bosnian uh, civilians inside the camp for six seven months. They didn't know what to do with them. They were waiting for the right opportunity to exchange them to to seek ransom money for them for you know different things. So so uh, you know in, in in Nazi Germany, the the whole concept of camps was to you know. Especially the death camps was to eliminate the people in, in a whole. In the case of Bosnia, it was to get rid of them from the territory as soon as possible, as quickly as possible. And that's why I think in some of these areas like Bichgrad, um, these crimes were so brutal to that extent that that uh, you know people would leave as quickly as possible and that they would never come back again. You know, uh, in Bichgrad you had you had these two houses where where where. Uh, Camp survivors, camp people who were interned in a camp, were brought and they were burned alive. So this kind of this level of brutality isn't something which was needed in, in the case of Michigan. But nevertheless, it was something which was insisted upon by the by the Boston sort of perpetrators on this local level, because uh, this uh, these crimes still remain in a collective in the collective memory of, of the survivors. And uh, you know, in a matter of three three months, basically, the whole entire Bosniak population from Vichyrad was entirely eliminated from the area. By the first of August, nineteen eighty-two, we didn't have a single Bosniak living in town. They were all either deported or they were forced to leave, or uh, they were even the camps were shut down in in, in, in August. And um, the other difference also between Nazi Germany and and uh, or the, the other camps throughout history in the Bosnian Serb camps is that uh, Bosnian Serbs never intended to keep the camps as long as possible. I believe that they wanted to get everything done by August, by the month of August, especially uh, in some towns because the schools were used as places of detention. The schools were the best option for, for local communities to detain people. Because they had a fence, they had a gym. It was a, it was a, it was a perfect place, uh, also along with factories to to intern people. Like and like in the case of Vishigrad, um, the camps were closed down by by August. The schools were cleaned up, and then they were opened up again in September for school. So I had kids coming back in September, going to the same places where 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 people were detained um, three months for the for the whole entire uh, you know, summer summer break. So uh, the camp system in Bosnia was not as uh, sophisticated as it was in in, uh, in Nazi Germany or in, or in other cases. It was very much um, 
uh, primitive. It was it was uh, uh, it was set up on a, on a local level, so that's why you had differences in in, in uh, implementation of the general plan. But the general plan was to get rid of the non serb Uh, Hickman, and related to this, I have one last question as to uh, historic, the level of historical comparison. Because uh, uh, you argue in your book that the brutality and the sadistic conduct of the perpetrators in the camps was a special phenomenon of these Bosnian Serb uh, camps, of this Bosnian Serb camp, camp system. And what you describe in your book very much re reminds one, of course, of the historical sources describing the br brutality and the statistic conduct of the Ustasha, of the Ustashi in, uh, of Ustasha guards in Yasenov, in the Yasenovets concentration camp during World War II. So if the enormous brutality is a unique feature, uh, something special to the Bosnian Serb camp system, how do you then understand or explain these very similar descriptions uh, from the Ustasha led camps in the Second World War? I believe that, especially in the case of like, um, in the case of Prior, uh, you had the, the 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 previous grievances of World War II, of such a crimes of Yatsenovac, Gadovno, of Radishka, and so on, was very much uh, present in in the in the general narratives of the Bosnian Serb army. So you had in in in, in Prior, for example, the commander of the first Krajina Corps. Um, uh, he was, in fact, uh, his parents were perished in, in, in war by the Ustasha time. So there, there is a connection. And, and in this case, uh, the, the Bosnian Serb army viewed uh, the, inter the detention of, of non-Serbs in Priador and in the whole Bosnian Skakaina as a sort of preventive or preventive war, preventing the, uh, preventive detention. You know, because they say that if, if we don't, uh, if we don't detain them, they will kill us. They will repeat the genocide from such a genocide from World War II. Uh, so, so definitely there is there is a, a, a large uh, element of the World War II uh, uh, significance there, and especially, uh, of course, the general question Bosniaks ask is why were Bosniaks primarily targeted camps, and why wasn't that the case with threat? But uh, in the case of Piedor, and uh, especially in Piedor, the Bosniaks from Piedor, from Kozaras and so on, they were viewed as descendants of Ustasha collaborators from World War II. So families who were uh, you know, collaborating with the Ustashas from World War, they, these guys were seen as their children, grandchildren, and so on. And uh, for this reason, they needed to be punished 50 years later on. However, this... Uh, this theory isn't isn't that much uh, uh, grounded in fact, because you have people like uh, Esad Radikovic, the, the famous Marska, whose parents were partisans, you know, who had nothing to do with the but who was nevertheless very brutally killed. Many other cases, but um, definitely the, the World War Two. Uh, uh, the brutality of the World War II crimes by the Ustasha and Yadavno in, in, in no, that's no longer the, the Ustasha camp system definitely had a large element, large inf uh, influence on the camp system, especially in Bosnska Krajina, because you had people who were descendants, victims from World War II, some of them direct, direct uh, victims, then participated in, in, in the war crime uh, uh, in Yador, Kozarat, and other towns. Okay, uh, Hikmet, I think we have uh, 15 minutes left for, for, for some questions and I would like to uh, move on now uh, to, to a different per perspective in my questions. And uh, I think this is also central because I, um, when we talked a couple of days ago, I asked you this question also and I, I would like now to repeat this question for the audience. So why did you choose uh, to do research only on camps run by the Bosnian Serbs. So uh, in the beginning, when I introduced you, I mentioned this transitional justice, responsibility and memory association, where you, you have been working for a year. Mm -hmm. And uh, the goal of this project of this, and they have some projects, and one of the projects is to document all camps and places of detention that existed in, in Bosnia and Herzegovina. 
you have chosen uh, to write the book about the Bosnian Serb camp system. Can you explain why? Well, firstly, uh, the primary reason, I mean, I, while I'm working on, on, this, on this project and on, on, on other projects, uh, I researched all the camps in Bosnia and I have a large collection of documentation from, from these camps and uh, many of them and so on. But my, my initial goal was to was to conduct a, a research and a, and a book or my doctoral thesis on all the camps in Bosnia. Then I realized that that was huge because most of the camps uh, could be compared in some segments, but not in the political context of the of the of the yeah. um, So that's why I re I realized that for to uh, to do the the easier part and to easier part and to, and to do only the Boston Serb uh, camp system because that was the first initial camps up in 1982. The other camps came out uh, a, a month or so later on. But these ones were set up in, in very early stages, so April, May, nineteen eighty-two, and um, I believe that the the, the intent be behind establishing the the, Bo the Bosnian Serb run camps is different from the from the intention um, of of the of the uh, hectic Bosnian camps or the camps that were, that were run by the Bosnian government. Uh, for that reason, I, I decided now to primarily focus on the Bosnian Serb camps, and then later on. To in my further research in the future to conduct to write two other books on two other. In that way, we'll be able to have a, a very good comparative uh, analysis of, of, of these of these. Um, the, uh, the huge problem with most of these camps is the lack of documentation, the lack of um, things written about about these camps. So the the Bosnian Serb camp system was quite. Uh, uh, difficult to write, but much more accessible because of the hate tribunal documentation I primarily use in, in, in my book. Uh, and second reason is uh, a personal reason. My my uh, family is from Vishir, is from Eastern Bosnia, and uh, I have several family members who perished in in, in Vishir as a result of of, of the of idol violence. For that reason, I decided that this way this would be a good way to. Um, now keep their memory memory alive and the memory of these local communities alive by by writing a book about them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Hikmet, you have said that uh, talking, doing research, speaking, discussing about uh, the Bosnian Serb camp system is a sensitive topic. It is very much, and if one reads the book, one feels it in almost every sentence. Uh, it's very hard to read, but very, I think a very good book. And you write in your book that so far, except from the book you have been writing, no concrete research has been done on camps. Uh, so I would like to ask you, Hikmet, why is the topic sensitive? For whom? So is, is it a sensitive issue for the former camp inmates because of the danger of re-traumatization? And this is also a question about did you did you do interviews with with the former uh, uh, inmates of the camps, or is it sen sen a sensitive uh, topic for for other reasons, for political reasons, probably in Bosnia and Herzegovina? Yeah. Well, uh, the primary reason why this was sensitive is because um, there is a let's say um, general narrative or or a historical narrative about, about the camps as sort of uh, in Bosnia. Which I don't agree with because the 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 and the. Hikmet, I'm sorry to interrupt. This was very central, but you, you, we could not hear you at, when you said the death camp. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> there there is a uh, there is a historical narrative uh, among certain uh, academic academics in Bosnia, uh, especially the wartime literature, which was scholarship, which was written that these camps were death camps, and that this was primary aim of. Was was to kill people, and uh, I, I don't agree with this with this whole entire uh, argument, and that's something which my book shows that, that these were not that camp, that these were camps, and um, for that reason, this book goes against the, the popular narrative uh, among among the Bosniak uh, historiography. I, I believe that it's something which is essential to know and something which is essential to to to, to read. Uh, and something which is essential to deal with. This is, this is in fact, a very important topic. 
because tens of thousands of, of Bosniaks went through this system, and so they are living today all over, um, you know, Germany, the U.S., Australia, all over, and um, a proper historical account uh, of their experience needs to be told. Uh, I did not. I talked to a lot of uh, camp survivors. I, I have a lot of them as my as my personal friends and so on. I did not interview them for two reasons. Firstly, uh, every interview is a new traumatic experience for them. So that's the first. Re Second reason is the ICTY had conducted so many interviews, went through cross examinations in, in courtrooms and so on. And I decided to use this court established facts and, uh, in, and uh, is testimonies given at the ICTY in order to, to write this book. I focused only on, on ICTY, uh, on court documentation from the ICTY, but also from the court of Bosnia and Herzegovina. So in total, I used more than uh, 55 judgments, uh, verdicts from, from these court cases in writing, in writing this book uh, for all these different counts. That's, that's, this, is, this is the main reason. And I believe that uh, even though that maybe some, some primary uh, resistance might be for the book from like, uh, traditionalist Bosniak photography, uh, I believe that in the long run, uh, they'll see that you know, nothing major has been written so far on, uh, on, the, on this topic. So, so uh, and it is, it is the first book. In the, in the literature review, I give a, I give a explanation of what has been written so far, and it's mainly, mainly memoirs uh, of, of drivers, uh, things which the rest is all wartime, uh, wartime facts, which, which are really outdated. You know? and most of the Boston academics who have written these books uh, have used only Boston sources, not, no, no international sources whatsoever. So, um, so that's why this, this it can be a bit, uh, might be a bit sensitive because it goes against the, the, the traditionalist uh, narrative about, about the camps. Uh, Hikmet, uh, I think we are coming to an end uh, slowly. I have two, two, two more questions and then we can conclude, I think. Uh, so one is a more practical one because I'm also an historian, uh, as you know. So I, I would like to know the archives, about the archives. I mean, you mentioned the archive of the ICTY. In the Hague, uh, we know that it's more or less uh, there's a lot of material online available. What about the courts in, in Bosnia? So, what? How is the access to 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 the courts and to the documents from the courts? Yeah, the the ICTY archives were were easily accessible, but the court to BH and the local courts, national courts, and others were not so accessible. So, the only things I could get my hands on were copies of. Uh, no other documentation from this period could be gotten. We couldn't hear you right now. You could only get what? <laughs> Court judgments. Ah, uh, okay. Nothing else. Nothing else was 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 accessible for for me um, or for anyone else uh, because the, the the laws in Bosnia are, are so strange. We still have this uh, uh, socialist era uh, um, uh, for privacy. I don't know. Um, or, 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 or different uh, norms in which you're not allowed to get certain doc documents until some you know, 50 years passes by or whatever. Uh, so, so many other institutions as well, for example, the Boston uh, uh, Security Services, um, which collected these witness statements during the war and documentation and so on, I also could not get access to that as well. Mm. They also did not provide access uh, in real time. So, so basically, my, my main, uh, uh, I base my, my, my research on the court judgments on, on the ICTY archives and on the court judgments from both the ICTY and the court of Bosnia and, and other local courts in Bosnia. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and then my last question. So you spoke about uh, how your book was perceived uh, by the Bosnian community. Uh, uh, this was quite interesting to me, and uh, I would like to know, was there from the Republika Srpska, so from this Bosnian-Serbian side, some kind of support for the thesis in your book? Because there are NGOs who are also like working on uh, documenting all the war crimes also of, of the Bosnian-Serb side. So 
did you have some support or do, do you know of any colleagues in Bosnia working on like similar subjects and covering also the other camps in Bosnia? Uh, so regarding camps, I honestly don't know anyone mm. think a much more let's say, answer. Uh, some of the researchers do do town-based research, like if they write the thesis only on Predor or only on Bilica and, and so on. Nobody has done this comparative aspect. Uh, so so yes, I, I have uh, some colleagues in Srpska, but uh, their contacts were mainly related to getting certain documentation from the official Republic of Substitutions. I could not get official lines, like you know, some word bits or things like that. But all the other research was basically um, uh, quite poor because most of the documentation is in the Hague. So, you know, we couldn't get access to any of these um, official archives or, or, or anything else. Um, but yeah, regarding scholarship in Bosnia today, I don't believe anyone, I don't know of anyone who's doing their research on camps at all. So mm -hmm. this is something which definitely needs to be done. Also on, on, on uh, the camps which were led by the Hestek Bosna uh, or Seatlet in 1982 and 1983, this is, some, this is also a topic which is not research and which has a total different context of, of, of the camp uh, from the Bosnian from apart from the Bosnian server and the Bosnian government control. So, so, so far, I do not know anyone who's doing this uh, in a much more mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, thank you so much, Hikmet. Hik uh, yeah, Hikmet, uh, I think this makes your book even more uh, extremely relevant and also current and also important. Yeah, uh, I, uh, yeah I think we, we come to an end now. Uh, I have prepared some concluding remarks uh, Hikmet, if I may. So um, I think I really think this is my own impression from uh, after 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 having read the book. I think the book is special. Uh, what is special about the book is really the extensive historiographical examination and analysis of materials coming from the ICTY, as well as from the courts of of Bosnia, uh, from cantonal courts in the Federation, and also from regional courts in the Republika Srpska. Uh, so it's judgments and indictments and testimonies uh, with which uh, Hikmet is, is working. And for it is one thing to make legal law about these legal processes. This is very important in order to hold the perpetrators accountable. But it is another thing to establish historical and moral truths from these files and also with the help of other sources and methods. And I think this is what the book actually accomplishes. So much of what we know today about the war in Bosnia and the crimes committed, we know from these legal files, but these do not represent the entire historical truth, uh, not least because many of the war crimes were not even brought before the ICTY. Therefore, I think this scientific study of these topics, like the one Hikmet is doing in his book, with the help of these legal files, is important to comprehensively come to terms with the past of the war and is therefore also indispensable for the future. So I thank you very much uh, for this book talk, uh, Hikmet. Also, I think in the name of our audience and uh, yeah, I hope that we have the chance to cooperate one time, probably here in Ringsburg. Thank you, thank you so much. Thanks for, for the invitation. Thanks for the good talk. And uh, yes, of course, with, with the audience, I mean, whoever wants to contact me for further discussions or talks or questions, do that uh, through social media or my email. So I'll be very happy to talk to the audience. Thank you so much. Thank you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.